Hey guys, welcome back to Zero Taste and today I'm returning to my roots with another 5 things you missed in Elden Ring video. This time we're venturing north into the frigid consecrated snowfield. Considering the near whiteout conditions and the inhospitable residents, it's quite understandable that many people would miss out on what the snowfields have to offer. So today, I'm going to show you all 5 things that you missed in the consecrated snowfield. Have you ever wondered what invisible monster is actually attacking you while you're in the Ordina Everjail? If you said that it's a black knife assassin, then you'd be partially correct, but you'd be wrong in terms of quantity, as it isn't a single persistent assassin, but four spread out across the Everjail. Well, what if, say, you wanted to fight back? How would that even be possible? That's where the Sentry's Torch comes in with the unique feature which is that it can dispel the invisibility of the Black Knife assassins, making them clearly visible. And to think that the shattering of the Elden Ring never would have happened if Godwin just would have used one of these as a nightlight. The Sentry's Torch is actually found on the outskirts of Landell and is bought from the Hermit Merchant. You may be thinking that having to invest 15 points in the Faith makes this not worth it, but you don't even need to meet the requirements or even hold the torch, as merely having it in your secondary slot will give you the effect. And now with the assassins visible, it's easy enough to kill them, and each of them drops a Ghost Glover Wart 9. I'm sure that a lot of you guys out there have the Silver Mirror Shield, but I also bet it is likely collecting dust in your inventory. It shouldn't be though because it's actually an insane shield. Found with the apostate derelict, it's likely that you pick this item up, but you're also probably too busy staring at the nice feet on display. The silver mirror shield belonged to another big woman who also likely had nice feet, Loretta, but that's enough about feet. The shield is extremely lightweight, with it being tied with the heater shield variants for the lightest shield with 100% physical resist. But do you know what none of the heater shields have? A fucking bonkers 89% magic resist. That's the highest in the entire game, by a lot, with the closest being 12% behind the silver mirror shield. So yeah, this shield is crazy, and you can pretty much just tell Estelle to stuff it with that dumb shit and beat his ass. In the consecrated snowfield, it's often hard to even tell what time of day it is. But one thing will remind you, and that is being struck down by a field boss that you didn't even know was there. That can often be the case with the death right bird found east of the apostate derelict. This boss can be quite the challenge, as its ghost flame attacks are quite potent, it has nearly 18,000 health, and its movements are those of a crackhead lit on fire. So if you're struggling, then I'll give you a little tip. Use the last right skill on the golden epitaph and just throw holy water pots. So just throw a couple pots and then the bird is cooked, dropping the explosive ghost flame spell, which is a touchy subject as some say it's completely useless and others say that those first guys eat paint chips. So I don't know where I really stand on this, but I can say it's pretty funny to knock enemies on their asses. I'm fallen and I can't get up! Have you ever been asked to watch the stove, but then the urge to press your hand onto the hot stove made you run away in fear? No, you haven't? Well, I haven't either. But apparently that's what Ammon was thinking when he abandoned his post and formed the Black Flame Monks. He dipped out from his responsibilities as a fire monk and swore fealty to the Black Flame because apparently he was scared of the giant's flame? I don't really know, maybe the glum eyed queen hit him with the fuck me eyes and his tongue hit the floor like something out of a fucking cartoon. Regardless, he now serves us pretty well now that he's dead. His black flame attacks deal percentage based damage, which if you know a thing or two about math, then you might be picking up what I'm putting down. You get Mr. Black Flame in the secret boss fight in the hidden path to the hail tree. I don't know why he's here, but once you defeat the Mimic tier, then you'll now be the proud owner of one Black Flame Monk Ammon. One Ash of War that I guarantee you have never huh? used before is White Shadow's Lure. Many of you probably haven't even heard of this ash and I can't blame you as if you weren't looking for it, you'd likely never find it. It's dropped by an invisible teardrop scarab south of Ordinia which is being chased by a pack of wolves. 
So once you assert your dominance over the wolves, you can retrieve what's rightfully yours. Which is kind of sad if this Ash of War was your prized possession, as it'd be like if your family heirloom was a hydro dip $100 bill hypo. Well, enough of that. Exactly how bad is White Shadow's lure? Not actually that bad, but as you might expect, by the time it's available to you, it's rather underwhelming. It should have been found somewhere in Limgrave, where you could actually have some fun with it. Maybe swap its location with Unsheath and also increase its duration by a couple seconds. Then it might actually be worth using. Well, let me know in the comments how many of these items you already knew about, and if you've ever used any of them. I'd also appreciate it if you subscribe and help me reach a thousand subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you guys watching, and I'd love to hear from you all. I'm working on quite a few videos right now, and I hope to have more out soon. Until next time, this has been Zero Taste, thanks for watching, peace.